Hi, I'm Susan Taylor with Scripps Health in San Diego, California. Tens of millions of Americans experience heartburn, stomach pain, bloating, and diarrhea after they eat certain foods. Here to talk about food allergies and food sensitivity is Dr. Hannah Wongberg. She's an allergist and immunologist with the Scripps Clinic Medical Group in San Diego, California. Doctor, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks so much for having me. So what causes somebody to be allergic to food? So food allergies are reactions to food proteins that are driven by our immune system. And our immune system is our body's defense against dangerous infections. But sometimes the immune system makes mistakes and identifies a particular food protein as a threat. And when this happens, a patient may have an allergic reaction to a food that they eat. And what foods are we talking about? So the most common food allergies are peanut, tree nuts, egg, cow's milk, soy, wheat, fish, shellfish, and sesame. And how soon after you eat these foods do you know, yeah, I'm having a bad reaction to this? Usually with food allergy, the reactions occur quickly within minutes to hours. However, uh, there's all other ways that our body reacts to the food that we eat, such as food intolerance, and those reactions might be more delayed. And so who's most at risk for this? We know that kids with eczema are at particularly high risk for food allergy, but also if you have a family history of what we call atopic disease, and that includes conditions such as hay fever or seasonal allergies or asthma. And so there are certain people who may be more prone to developing food allergies, but we also know that really anyone can develop a food allergy. And so go into a little bit more depth about the symptoms. Yeah, so with a food allergy, oftentimes the reactions occur very quickly after eating the food. A patient may have hives, which is an itchy red rash that can happen anywhere on the body. Sometimes there's swelling of the lips or the face. Other times in more severe reactions, there may be symptoms such as difficulty breathing, vomiting, or feeling lightheaded or dizzy like you might pass out. And we talked before about the stomach pain, bloating, and the diarrhea. Yeah, exactly. And so it, a lot of times patients have gastrointestinal symptoms uh, associated with food allergy, and other times they have gastrointestinal symptoms associated with food intolerance, which is a different condition. So what is the difference between a food allergy and food intolerance, food sensitivity? That's a great question. So food allergy uh, oftentimes is confused for a food intolerance, but these conditions are distinctly different. So food allergy is driven by our immune system. And oftentimes these reactions occur very quickly. And in the most severe cases, they can be life-threatening in a condition known as anaphylaxis. So anaphylaxis involves many different organ systems of our body. Oftentimes patients may have hives, which is an itchy red rash all over their body. There may be other symptoms such as difficulty breathing, vomiting, diarrhea, all sorts of symptoms. And in the most extreme cases, there can be anaphylactic shock in which a patient may go unconscious and it can be life-threatening. Uh, in contrast to that, food intolerance can cause a lot of symptoms in, that are similar in some ways. Typically they're gastrointestinal. So there may be nausea, uh, bloating, gas, indigestion, uh, and these symptoms can be very uncomfortable for patients, but they're not generally life-threatening. So what diseases cause food intolerance? There are all sorts of conditions that can be associated with food intolerance. Many patients who have irritable bowel syndrome, which is a condition that can be associated with abdominal discomfort, bloating, diarrhea, or constipation. Oftentimes patients with that condition find that they do better with eliminating certain foods from their diet, such as milk or perhaps other foods that they've identified as a trigger for their symptoms. Uh, many patients have lactose intolerance. That's perhaps one of the most well-known food intolerances in which patients ingest dairy and they have a trouble digesting lactose found within dairy and it can lead to bloating, cramping, gas, and it can be very uncomfortable. Other conditions such as celiac disease uh, triggers reactions to gluten, which is found in breads. And so patients have to avoid those foods. So there's a lot of different conditions that can contribute to food intolerance. 
There's a lot of at home food sensitivity kits out there. You can purchase them online. You can purchase them in the drugstore. How do they work and are they effective? Many different companies do offer these food sensitivity kits. They typically cost anywhere between $100 to $600. They're out of pocket. They are not covered by insurance. And unfortunately, they're not evaluated by the FDA. These often claim to explore for a wide variety of food sensitivities, but these tests are not backed by strong science. And we have evidence that oftentimes these tests are looking for immunoglobulin G antibodies to a wide variety of foods, claiming that this may lead to a food intolerance or a food sensitivity. But there's really not compelling data supporting this, and these tests can be very misleading for patients and cause them to feel confused or anxious about eating certain foods that they've otherwise been tolerating their whole life. So would you advise against using these tests? I do generally advise against using these tests. Unfortunately, um, everyone would like to know if they have an underlying food intolerance, but these tests just don't do what they claim to do. So if you're having problems after eating, when should you go see a doctor and for what kind of evaluation and what kind of testing? Yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, there are so many different ways our bodies react to the foods that we eat. And if a patient suspects they're reacting to a particular food, whether it's an allergy or a food intolerance, I definitely recommend seeing their doctor and talking about it. And we'll get a careful history about the reaction and determine the next steps. If we suspect a food allergy, oftentimes we'll recommend testing for that. We can do that with skin prick testing and allergy clinic, or sometimes we do blood testing. Other times we may recommend something called an oral food challenge. And that involves patient coming into allergy clinic and eating the food slowly in our clinic while we observe carefully for any signs or symptoms of an allergic reaction. Or on the other hand, if we suspect food intolerance, we may recommend particular diets or even a food diary. So once you have a diagnosis, how long after you eliminate certain foods will you see results? With food allergy, oftentimes after eliminating the food from a patient's diet, they'll see results very quickly within hours to days. On the other hand, with food intolerance, Eliminating foods that cause problems may lead to improvement within days to weeks. If you don't get a handle on treating these food allergies, what can happen long term? Yeah, so food allergies can be life threatening. So if a patient eats a food and has early onset symptoms such as hives, difficulty breathing, vomiting, you know, that that can be a life threatening emergency and they should be seen in the ER. However, after that evaluation, they really should come to allergy clinic where we can explore that reaction in greater detail, get a very careful history, and then do any testing that we deem necessary to get to the bottom of that reaction. And oftentimes we'll give patients the tools to identify and treat an allergic reaction should there be any future accidental exposures to the food. Any final thoughts, doctor? Yeah, I just say that if, if you think that you have a food allergy or an underlying food intolerance, that can really impair your quality of life and it could potentially be dangerous. So it's very important that you talk to your doctor about your symptoms so they can help you evaluate what you're reacting to and get you the appropriate treatment. Doctor, thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate you taking the time. Thanks so much for having me. If you want more information on food allergies and food sensitivity, just click on the link or go to scripts.org forward slash videos. Want more critical information about your health? Please subscribe to our Scripps Health YouTube channel and follow us on social media at Scripps Health. At Scripps, we're here for good. I'm Susan Taylor. Thanks for joining us.